In the early afternoon of Saturday, September 28th, we all sat by our TVs, grabbed some popcorn, and watched what we all thought would just be a regular old SpaceX launch. And for the most part, it was. Crew 9 launched out of Slick 40 at the KSC at approximately 1.17 p.m. Eastern Time, and just about nine minutes and one booster landing later, Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbanov were happily in orbit and on their way to the International Space Station. All seemed to have gone perfectly to plan. But then, just after midnight, SpaceX posted this tweet. After today's successful launch of Crew-9, Falcon 9's second stage was disposed of in the ocean as planned, but experienced an off-nominal deorbit burn. As a result, the second stage safely landed in the ocean, but outside of the targeted area. We will resume launching after we better understand the root cause. Okay, this might not be too big a deal if it weren't for the fact that exactly one month ago to the day before this, on just a regular old Starlink mission, Booster 1062 came in for a landing on a short fall of Gravitas, and... Ew. And just over one month before that was probably the most severe anomaly. Due to a poorly tested sensor, an oxygen leak developed on the second stage of Falcon 9 while carrying another set of Starlinks into orbit. This resulted in the Merlin experiencing what could be known as a hard start when SpaceX attempted to relight it. All 20 satellites fell back to Earth and the mission was pretty much a complete failure. That is three. Uno, dos, tres total or partial failures in 79 days. So, what's going on? Why is SpaceX the most reliable launch provider in the world, all of a sudden experiencing so many anomalies? With this one being particularly concerning because it incurred during a crewed mission. Before we get to that, I want to address a few things I've been seeing from certain people in the community. The first is tweets like this. As I'm sure most of you know, there's been a lot of tension between SpaceX and the FAA lately over the approval of Starship's fifth flight test. And while I almost completely agree with SpaceX's criticism of the FAA, some people seem to have gotten the impression that the FAA is some sort of nefarious organization chomping at the bit to hurt SpaceX. While it is true that it is a bloated, slow, inefficient slug of an organization, the idea that it is somehow malicious is honestly just silly. The FAA is not looking for ways to, in quotes, punish SpaceX, nor are they going to exploit anything. I may not be the smartest man in the world, but I can promise you there is not some dude in the FAA with a cape and a fedora on sitting there twirling his mustache waiting for SpaceX to have some sort of failure so he can use it as an excuse to delay Starship. That, that's just dumb. Second thing I want to address is that it feels like there's a fair amount of people who like to quibble with what others call failures, so yes, Crew-9, the mission, was a success. The astronauts are well on their way, and these issues with the second stage had no impact on their safety. But this off-nominal deorbit burn has still completely grounded Falcon. Anything that is good enough to ground a vehicle, I'm gonna call a failure. So. What, what did happen after all? So SpaceX's tweet doesn't give us a ton of information. All they said was that the stage experienced an off-nominal deorbit burn, causing it to miss the targeted splashdown area. So I think some important context to be aware of is what exactly SpaceX was trying to do with this burn. This graph, shared by Jonathan McDowell, showcases the targeted re-entry corridor for the stage. As you can see, the area is not much longer than the island of New Zealand. So, on the scale of the whole planet, not very big. A burn that is off by only a few seconds could easily result in this failure mode. Let's talk about that for a moment, the burn. There are generally two possible scenarios that occurred. A burn that lasted longer than expected, or a burn that lasted shorter than expected. Now an overburn is extremely unlikely and would most likely be due to some sort of software issue or something along those lines, although SpaceX has experienced what you could maybe call an overburn in the past, so maybe we just keep that in the back of our minds. The other possibility was an underburn, or the engine, for whatever reason, shutting off early. The first thing that I thought of was the fact that starting with Crew-7, SpaceX has been performing return to launch site landings with the boosters. RTLS returns are obviously much more expensive from a Delta V perspective, so my initial thought 
is that what if the return profile is just too aggressive and the second stage ended up running out of propellant before it could finish its de-orbit burn? I tried to find some evidence of this by comparing the launch of Crew-9 to the previous ISS launch, Crew-8, but from what I can see, the boosters performed exactly the same and the dragons were deposited into pretty much identical orbits. The only difference I could find is that the second stage burn on Crew-9 lasted just a few seconds longer. This could easily be attributed to SpaceX just slightly tweaking the throttle profile of the Merlin. So, does this completely rule out the launch profile as the cause? Well, no. At the smallest levels, there are thousands of variables that affect how much propellant a rocket engine consumes, so it's possible that SpaceX just drew a bad hand for this mission and they came up just a little bit short. Now, making assumptions like that during an actual investigation is obviously very unwise, but I'm just trying to give you guys a picture of the situation, and it's possible the launch profile had nothing to do with the failure. It's possible, just like the earlier failure of Falcon 2nd stage, that some sort of leak developed, as even a small one could yield such an underperformance. But at the end of the day, this is up to SpaceX to figure out. Unlike some other failures, there really isn't much video evidence to go on for this one. Beside what SpaceX decides to share with us, I don't think we're going to get much more information on our own. But really, what makes this somewhat innocuous anomaly kind of a big deal is the fact that this is the third time SpaceX has had something go wrong, and the third time Falcon 9 has been grounded as a result, and this is all in less than three months. I've been seeing a lot of posts that go along the lines of like, well, it's over for SpaceX, they're in trouble now, uh oh, ah! Well, this string of failures is certainly concerning, I don't think we should get too ahead of ourselves. It is certainly possible that after so many successful launches, SpaceX has grown complacent and isn't being as diligent as they once were. It is also possible that this is just the limit of Falcon 9 architecture. Maybe a design like Falcon can't handle being turned around and flown as quickly as it is. The vehicle, after all, was originally not even built to be reusable. Now they're flying boosters over 20 times and rolling second stages out of the factory every few days, and they might just be asking too much of their old workhorse. But whatever the reason, do I think SpaceX is somehow losing its edge or declining as an organization? Well, no. Let us not forget that Electron had a pair of complete failures in late 2020 and early 2021, and yet today Rocket Lab is sending those things off with absolutely no problem. This is obviously far from an ideal situation, and I think SpaceX should probably be giving Falcon a little more love and care, but I think in a few years we'll all be looking back at these string of failures as nothing more than a little speed bump. After all, and I do want to emphasize this, an anomalous deorbit burn is typically not a huge deal. Most rockets that are considerate enough to do them at all oftentimes run into issues when disposing of stages. The only reason that this time it seems like a bigger deal than perhaps in previous occasions is that it's part of a pattern. And now it is up to SpaceX to break that pattern because, like I said, right now I think these issues in the long run are just going to be speed bumps. But if stuff like this continues happening, then it might be time for a longer conversation. But until then, I'm not going to worry. Before I wrap up, I've seen a lot of people worried about Europa Clipper, which is scheduled to launch in October on a Falcon Heavy and has a launch window it needs to hit. And honestly, since I have absolutely no clue as to the cause of this anomaly, I also have no clue how difficult it will be to fix or what the FAA is going to need to see before they can return to flight. So, you know, in terms of Europa getting delayed or not, mis not making its window, who knows? I don't know. Maybe someone smarter than me knows, but I think we're just going to have to leave it there. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, and bye!